Hi, it's Rob. Welcome to this video where we'll get hands-on with AWS IoT. Before we dive in and start building, let's discuss the use case for the app we'll be implementing throughout this playlist. Device Transport Company is an IoT device distribution company. They have a fleet of autonomous vehicles which deliver and retrieve IoT devices such as sensors, servos, and microcontrollers used in IoT applications. We've been contracted to implement a connected vehicle technology IoT solution for tracking their vehicle metadata, such as location, speed, fuel consumption, as well as provide the ability to interact with the vehicles to perform tasks such as toggling the running lights remotely. We'll use some of the AWS IoT services discussed in the playlist intro video to implement our solution. So if you'd like an overview of AWS IoT and related managed services, feel free to check that video out. Now, for the first several videos in this playlist, we'll be simulating physical devices, the fleet of trucks, using code. Node.js applications using the AWS IoT SDK, to be exact. In later videos in this series, I'll show you how to connect to AWS IoT using a Raspberry Pi. If you've not used a Raspberry Pi before and are interested in getting started with one, I have a playlist dedicated to the Pi that I'm adding to as I build out this playlist with the aim of bringing the two concepts together in the end to implement a Raspberry Pi in AWS IoT solution. I'll provide a link to that playlist in the description below if you're interested. However, we have a lot of ground to cover before we get working with a physical device, so let's get started. In a terminal window on my Mac, I'll execute AWS configure list, and we see I have an IAM user provisioned on my local machine. However, this user is going to need a policy added to it to work with AWS IoT. So let's jump into the AWS IAM console and start by creating a new user group, which we'll add our IAM user to, as well as a new policy with the appropriate access. I'll create a new group, call it devs, add the IAM user, and then create a new policy. Here I'll click the JSON tab and replace the default code with the following. Then I'll click Next, Next. I'll give the policy a name of Transfer IoT Policy. We see the summary of permissions added, and then I'll create the policy, which we see here. Now, if I go back to the IAM console where I'm creating the user group and scroll down, refresh, I see our transport IoT policy, which I'll select and then create the group. And this looks good. Now, back in the terminal, I'll make a new directory, device transport company, to hold the code for our project. Inside of that directory, I'll create another directory to hold the code for our first AWS IoT thing, which will be truck one. And then I'll run npm install to install the AWS IoT device SDK for JavaScript. Now, still inside the truck one folder, I'll download the AWS IoT certificate authorities public certificate which we'll reference in our code, as well as use to sign the IoT certificates we'll create shortly. And here we see the certificate's been saved. Now in the AWS IoT Core Service Console, we can get started by creating our first thing. So under Manage, I'll expand all devices, and then Things, and then Create Things. Here I'll select create a single thing because we're going to add one device, one truck. Click next and give the thing a name of truck one. I'll leave the defaults for now, click next and select to auto generate a new certificate. Click next, then create a policy. I'll give the policy a name of truck policy, then click on JSON and replace the default code with the following. Then create the policy. 
Now I'll jump back into the tab where I'm creating my thing, select the truck policy, and create the thing. And here I'll download certificates for the device certificate, the public key, and the private key, and the root CA as well. Then click done. And if I click view certificate, we'll see the truck policy is applied. And if I click things, we'll see truck one. Now back in the downloads folder, I'm gonna rename the private key file and the certificate, and then copy them into the truck one folder. Okay, now with our first thing created, truck one, We'll create our second thing, truck two, but this time instead of using the AWS console, we'll use the CLI. So in the terminal, I'll go back a level, make a directory for truck two and change into it. Then I'll copy the root cert from truck one's folder into truck two. Now I'll execute the AWS IOT create thing command passing it a thing name of truck2. And then execute AWS IoT create keys and certificate for our new thing. I'll copy the certificate ARN because we'll need this shortly and save it off. And then execute AWS IoT attach policy, passing the policy name of truck policy and setting the target equal to the ARN we just copied. Then I'll run AWS IoT attach thing principal, passing it the thing name of truck2 and setting the principal equal to the ARN we just copied. Then I'll go back a level into the root and execute the AWS IoT describe endpoint command to get the endpoint to connect to AWS IoT and store this in an endpoint.json file. Then I'll copy the endpoint to truck one and truck two. And now if we jump back into the AWS IoT console, go to things, we'll see our new thing, truck two. If I click on it, we'll see the certificate is attached. And if we go into certificates, we see we have two certificates. If I open the first one, this has the truck policy attached for truck one. And if I open the second, this also has a truck policy attached, but this is for truck two. And now we're ready to start looking at the code. But before I do that, because I'll forget later. I'm gonna change directory into truck two and install the AWS IoT device SDK. Now inside the truck one folder, I've created a file named demo underscore one dot JS, which will be available to you in the project's GitHub repo that I've provided the link to in the description below. We start out by requiring the AWS IoT device SDK, and then we have a constant for the endpoint file, which requires the endpoint.json file that we put inside of the truck one folder. Here, we're creating a constant for the device, which sets the key path equal to private.pem.key in the truck one folder the cert path equal to the certificate PEM cert file in the same folder and sets the CA path equal to the root CA cert in the same folder. The client ID is set to the value of device name, which is declared as a constant, which does a split on the current directory name, which is truck one. And finally, the host is set to the endpoint address of the endpoint file in the endpoint.json, which if we look at, we see is provided here. Scrolling down a bit, we see the connect event is registered on the device, which calls the infinite loop publish function. The infinite loop publish function calls publish on the device, 
passing it a topic of truck telemetry and a stringified version of calling the get truck data function passing it the device name. The get truck data function creates a variable of message which is set to a JSON object with properties and then there's a constant for device data for truck one and truck two. Here I've made up a VIN for truck one and truck two and set the latitude and longitude for both vehicles. For truck one, it's located in Seattle. And for truck two, it's outside of Albany. Then the properties from the device data are being used to set properties on the message. Then there's a delay to allow publishing every five seconds, which calls infinite loop publish again. And the same file is located in truck two. Now, if we jump back into the terminal, I've actually opened two new terminals, one in the truck one directory and one in truck two. I'll go ahead and run the program, which will simulate the thing connecting to AWS IoT using the SDK by executing node demo one JS. And we see this is sending the truck's telemetry data to AWS IoT for truck one. Then I'll jump over to the truck two terminal and execute the same app, which is sending truck telemetry data to AWS IoT for truck two. Now we'll jump back into the AWS IoT console, click on the MQTT test client, and then subscribe to the topic where the messages are being published. And so we know which topic to subscribe to. Let's go back to the code for a second. And here we specify the topic as truck telemetry. So I'll copy this, go back to the console, paste it in and subscribe. And now we see our messages are being sent. Now I'll just jump back into the terminals and stop the apps for the time being. So in this video, we were able to create two AWS IoT things, truck one and truck two, one using the AWS console, the other using the CLI, as well as create and apply their certificates and policies. We also wrote some code using the AWS IoT SDK and published messages to AWS IoT, which we were able to subscribe to and view using the MQTT test client. In the next video, we'll create an AWS IoT rule that will send an email from an SNS topic when the fuel level of a truck is less than 25%. I hope you're excited to move forward and I hope to see you in the next video. Oh, and if you found this video useful, feel free to give it a like. And if you'd like to be notified when I add more content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.